The sea created us, say the Garifunas. These descendants of slaves live today in tightly knit communities along the coast in Honduras, away from the world and its noise. With one foot in the sea and the other one on the ground, the Garifunas have never forgotten their African roots. The day begins at dawn for Garifuna sailors. Edito is 52 years old, a well-respected captain. He's always been a fisherman, and the ocean holds no secrets for him. We have to be careful during the launch. It's not something to be done lightly. The waves can be treacherous here. It can make the process difficult. We need to locate series of three waves and wait for the right time. Once the wave barrier has been crossed, there's no need to head to the open sea to find fish. It's enough to navigate along the coast. Be vigilant. The sandy floor rapidly becomes deep here, and the cold currents running along the shore attract shoals of fish that swim just a couple of dozen meters away from the beach. The history of the Garifunas begins in the Caribbean, on St. Vincent Island. Survivors from several shipwrecks carrying black slaves blended with the Arawak Indians living on the island. They were then hunted by the English and ended up on the coast of Honduras just over 200 years ago. Today, they are a people in their own right in Latin America. Shall we go over there? No, better over here. If we want to catch something, we need a big perimeter. Fish are smart, they keep moving. In order to see them moving near the surface, we need to keep an eye everywhere. People on the beach help us by screaming and pointing at the fish. Everyone here is able to locate the tiniest movement on the surface. We all know how to read the sea. Can you see anything? Keep an eye on the birds. What about over there? What are you doing? There are too many of you. The fish are going to escape. Go help them. See, we got them. The way back after fishing is always a special moment. The catch is divided among fishermen before being sold to the members of the community. All right, we can begin the distribution. We're seven sailors, so that's seven shares. Once we've shared, we'll sell what's left.
Punta Piedra is a village of almost 2,000 inhabitants lost on a wild coast. 400 families live here without running water or electricity. They're all Garifunas. Garifuna, a word that means cassava eater. Behind the village, the foothills of the American mountain range are like another ocean, a series of waves and steep hills covered with tropical vegetation. Women such as Celsa, Edito's wife, are responsible for taming this wild land. A land that was terra nullis, a land of no one, before the Garifunas settled here. Yes, a 20-minute climb every day, just like our fathers and mothers before us and our children after us. If we stop working the land, the jungle comes back very quickly. Fifteen years ago, there used to be a plot here. Now the forest is back. Living near the jungle is a constant struggle. This is hard labour indeed. What a plight! Every day we have to fight against weeds. Removing weeds, cutting, planting, again and again. So real sacrifice, really is. Without cassava, there can't be garifunas. Cassava is just as important as the fish men catch in the sea. No single individual owns land around here. Instead, the community distributes plots to each family. The community owns the deeds for all of our lands, for the vast territory around us. People interested in building hotels and making palm oil would like to get their hands on our land. We have to fight constantly in order to preserve the boundaries of our country. We won't let them get our land. This is Garifuna land. We were born here and we'll die here. We'll never leave. This is our home. At the height of the day, the heat is stifling. Punta Piedra falls into a deep slumber. It's not until the end of the day that a breeze from the sea finally starts blowing, an opportunity to go fishing on the beach. We like to come and catch crabs at the end of the day. Just us, the women and the kids. After the day's heat and work, it's really nice. Machuca is our traditional soup. It's based on coconut milk and banana puree. This one has crayfish in it, but regular fish also works. We use the richness of our land and combine everything it gives us when cooking. I want to say machuca is a strong symbol of the Garifuna culture. It's the result of a mix, just like us. It's like our language. It blends African, French and Arawak words. 
It's a bond that connects us with each other. We're proud of it. One for all and all for one, that's how it works here. There are no distinctions between us. When we go fishing, we leave together and we come back together. We're neither rich nor poor. But thanks to God, that's enough for us. We're all descendants of slaves that never became slaves. And that is in our blood. Edito goes out to sea again. He moves away from the shore for another kind of fishing. You think it's full? I hope so. It's quite heavy. This one's nice. Every day at sea or on dry land, the Garifunas fight to maintain their most precious legacy, to survive and to stay free. Through the years and despite some wandering, they managed to remain within Hispanic America. Garifunas are from here, but also from over there, from Africa, on the other side of the Atlantic. Africa that is so far away, and yet unites them. Tapolo Jaya, Ubonae, Wabo, Buyana, U.